Hi there, Kimbu. So this is me coming back at you at least, I'm thinking two weeks late, maybe. <laughs> so you posted on here um, over two weeks ago. And for the last month, I have been in pretty much a total fog. My brain is discombobulated. There's a lot of reasons for that, including losing my two dear furry, furry ones, my companions, my best buds within 10 days of each other. Um, and since then, I just have not been able to sort of get my feet back on the ground. So getting back to doing this is one attempt at doing that. So we'll see how this goes. I have no idea what I'm going to talk to you about here. We, well, first of all, let me congratulate you on the subject of your last video, which was being an unstoppable storyteller book launch. And I know that that book is being well received in the community of writers who are interested in learning more about uh, serialization and um, you know how to write serials and what the difference is between a serialized novel and a serial and all of those things. I have learned so much from you about that, about this process of sharing work online since we started kind of you know working together in different ways. And I want to thank you for that. And I know that this book is going to be a huge help to a lot of people. So congratulations. I know the marketing is not fun. I hear that from writers uh, that I coach with um, uh, my creativity coaching and my editing. I hear that a lot. You know, it's the writing that we want to do. It's the putting the words on the page, not creating ads or trying to network in groups or, you know, whatever. Um, so I know that it's not easy, but I'm here rooting for you. And if there's anything that I can do to support you in that aspect, you know that I'm here for you. So what I have on my um, agenda in the short term is I'm thinking about the Facebook group that I moderate called Women Writing for Change. I've been hosting that group since March of 2020, before the pandemic. It launched and started out, of course, as just groups of friends, you know, writer friends, uh, clients. And it has grown slowly but surely to almost 500 members. And I'm not sure what to do about that, if I need to do anything about that. It's <clears throat> not a particularly active group in terms of the women interacting with one another, except for the co-writing sessions that we do every week. And that's really only a very tiny percentage of the women who show up for those. And I don't know if that's because people don't realize that we're doing them or if the schedule doesn't permit people, I just am not quite sure. But I would love to see that group much more active. I would love to see the women get to know one another because I know that there are ways they could support each other that they probably don't even recognize. But I can't really cultivate that all on my own. And so, as I mentioned to you, I'm thinking of inviting a writer friend. Her focus is memoir where mine is fiction, um, to see if she would be interested in co-admitting with me. And so we had a short chat about that this morning, and we're going to be talking about that again in the next week or so um, on a deeper level to see if that's something that can work for both of us. So that's one thing. And uh, of course, my Ream page and my Substack page are two of my priorities right now, because that's where I'm sharing my writing. and the process of creating my branding, if you will, around what I want those pages to convey, the feeling that I want them and my writing to convey and how I want to present those to the world has been kind of taking up some brain space lately. And of course the Substack, I already started out with um, the 200 words a day essays along with prompts and am now doing lessons learned 
and posting those uh, in the Substack and then sharing them in the Facebook group. And my Ream page is still a baby. Uh, I think I have three followers there. It's a start, but I've just in the last few days, um, and this is probably why my brain is so weary right now. I've just landed on what I feel like is the true way that I want to present my writing on my Ream page. So for those of you who might be listening in on this conversation, Ream is a platform that was created by writers. It's similar to Patreon, except that it has tools and format that are much more conducive to sharing writing. And right now, the online writing world is dominated by romance and fantasy and erotica and science fiction. And so there are not a lot of writers who write what I write who are serializing online. So I'm kind of a test case. I'm putting myself out there in a way that I have no idea whether it's going to work or not, but I'm willing to experiment and most importantly, to have fun doing this. So I have my Ream page over here that's just starting and I have my Substack over here, which I am um, have been writing on now for a couple of months. Both of them are just tiny babies right now but I'm kind of seeing how they're going to fit together. And so this whole branding thing was just ripping up my brain because I'm not a graphic artist. I'm not good at naming things. And so I kept, I would land on something and I would think, yeah, that's it. And I would sit with it for a few days and then no, that wasn't it. That doesn't, doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right. It doesn't convey what I want to convey. But on Wednesday, I landed on something that feels really good and really exciting. And as often happens in my life, I got the signs to prove to me, to show me that I was headed down the right path. So oh, where to start this? So I went down a rabbit hole on Wednesday looking for different themed things related to the, the types of things that I write. The historical fiction that I write is generally between mm, uh, late 1800s, 1880s. Uh, up to about 1970 and U.S., okay? And so thinking about what are some through lines in that it, big span of time that I might be able to use as some sort of a symbol or representation of what it is that I want to, to write about. And I just couldn't land on anything. And as I often do, I get sidetracked when I start looking for one thing and something else shows up and I get interested in that and I start going down the rabbit holes and I somehow landed on the University of North Carolina at Asheville, which I grew up in Asheville, landed on their archives page, on their collections page. And in looking up some of the locations that I want to write about, because my stories are often inspired by place. I ran across some postcards and some bells went off in my brain. Postcards, they've been around for a long time. I can use them as representations of the different eras that I want to write in because the postcards existed during all of that time. So that got me excited. And then I kept scrolling through the collection and came upon an article about this one particular collection that had a photograph uh, of uh, a postcard that was one of the sites that I want to write about, which no longer exists. I had once a long time ago seen one photograph of this place, but that's the only one that I've known existed. I've been to the site. The building is no longer there. There are some walls and other remnants, but the place doesn't exist anymore. And so to find a postcard that showed this structure really got me excited. Okay, that's not the end of the story. As I went further into that collection, I realized that that collection was donated to UNCA by the father of one of my best friends all the way through school. I've known her since first grade. I haven't seen her now in about four years, but we have done this accordion thing, you know, where we've 
been close and we've spent lots of times to time together and then we'll you know go apart go to different schools then we come back together we room together as in uh, freshman year of college and then you know went off got married she had kids she moved up north got apart from each other came back together again and so over the last 10 or so years we reconnect like every couple of years and her father's now deceased, and I had no idea that they had donated this postcard collection to UNCA. So that may sound like something very insignificant to you, but to me, it's definitely a sign that I'm headed in the right direction. So I came home that evening and worked on my ream graphics, and I've got those all set, and I still need to figure out how they're going to tie in with my website and my Substack because right now my website is a total mess because there are things that I am no longer offering, services that I no longer offer as I make this transition to spending more time on my writing and focusing on the writing retreats that I do. Those are my two main focuses. And so just trying to get all of that sorted out. Um, things always take longer than we think they're going to take. But um, I'm glad that I had this opportunity to share these things with you, because even though there some of them are things you already knew, Kimbu, um, just talking about them re-energizes me. And so I started out this conversation, very scrabble brain, scramble brained, and <laughs> I guess I still am. Um, very scramble brained, but now I'm like energized and motivated again. So thank you for that. I appreciate these regular conversations, even though I made them a little bit irregular for a while. Hopefully we can get back on track to maybe doing them on Mondays and Thursdays. And for any of you who might be listening in, you know, comment below if you have anything to add to this conversation and we're glad for you to eavesdrop. So I'll be seeing you, Kimbu. Bye.